Good morning. No, good afternoon. Um, my name is Simon Sylvester Chowdhury. Um, this is my colleague, Chris Lawler. Um, I'll give a quick introduction. I am actually a graduate of the CGA. Um, however, now too many years to count. Uh, and uh, CGA was such a great part of my academic experience, um, not just uh, during grad school, but also professionally now being uh, my sixth or seventh year teaching this course here. Uh, during, the, during my time at the CGA, I thought that I had great exposure to a lot of you know, international topics and, and obviously in the arena of global affairs generally. Um, however, love to look at things through the lens of entrepreneurship and innovation. And so this course is an introductory course to entrepreneurship and innovation more broadly, bringing some of the um, kind of traditional and untraditional, uh, you know, various um, techniques and tactics to building your own startup or organization as a whole. My background is I run a nonprofit called CivLab. Uh, we run an organization uh, for the city of New York that brings together urban tech entrepreneurs, so entrepreneurs in the space of mobility, housing, energy, um, and I helped build the Urban Future Lab, uh, which is the first urban tech incubator in New York City. Before we go further, I'm going to pass it off to my fellow entrepreneur uh, and teacher, Chris Lawler. Thanks, Simon. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Chris Lawler. Um, my background is largely in um, entrepreneurship and venture capital. Um, I started my first company uh, back in 2007. Um, since then, uh, I have done uh, five different companies for the last three years. Um, I have I founded and have been running a, uh, a global uh, blockchain company called, called Tiki Tezos. Um, we have offices in five different countries around the world, um, about 200 employees. Um, and uh, we work on a bunch of stuff um, from, um, you know, from, from, from uh, you know, in-game uh, economies for video games to far more seriously um, technology that underpins parts of the banking system. And now we're working with, um, with the United States government and, and several cities on, um, and states on, uh, on digital identity work. So kind of, you know, run, runs the gamut. Um, but um, I also have, have done a, a fair amount of uh, investing in various types of, um, of startups uh, across a bunch of different sectors. Um, academically, uh, you know, I, I sort of have never been able to stay away from school. So um, I did my, my undergraduate in astrophysics, um, you know, sort of you know, fell down the tech rabbit hole after that, um, you know, into when, when I started my career. Um, picked up an MBA from Harvard Business School, um, and I guess I had been away from school long enough that when uh, Simon asked me to co-teach with him two years ago, I couldn't say no. So um, this has been this has been a, a wonderful, um, you know, wonderful experience. Um, you know, had a had a really good time. Uh, you know, te teaching with Simon. It's a great course. Um, I think you know, maybe Simon, I'll turn it over to you. We'll we'll run through, um, you know, basically the. Uh, the philosophy behind the course and and some of um, you know some of the 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 key themes and topics. Thank you, Chris. Um, and I think the as you'll learn from us, and if you do take the class, a lot of this course uh, is not just developed from readings and positive experiences, but also negative experiences and failures that either Chris and I have had with startups or building our own businesses um, or ones that we have invested or, or worked with to develop. Uh, and so uh, in that vein, we bring in a lot of speakers to talk about their um, experiences building their own companies. Uh, but also I kind of wanted to start with this uh, because it is kind of one of the more fun but actually real elements of the course, which is we culminate the course in bringing in, you know, Chris mentioned VCs, um, actual investors. And so we do two sessions with six different investors uh, where your final is actually to pitch in front of them. Uh, I always start every year by saying, our goal here is for, you know, somebody in this class or multiple people in this class to create their own company or at least learn the tools to create their own company. Uh, we can actually say that a student from our last session 
uh, emailed us recently and he has created his own company with the projects that he came out of it, actually not a nonprofit, which also takes me to my next point. You know, we, we also took the perspective that uh, startups aren't just for-profit companies, they're nonprofit companies as well. Typically in a for-profit company, you look for an exit and an exit can really be in, in two different ways. It can be your company is acquired or, or you make it to the stock market. Um, we require all students that do either of those to make sure they give us a nice percentage of their company if it comes out of that our class. That is that is a requirement. No, but I'm joking. Um, and and you know, going back to the kind of skills that that we aim to teach, you know, what I've learned is that uh, the skills I've learned in entrepreneurship paired with my degree at the Center for Global Affairs. Uh, not only helped me in the scenarios that involved innovation development, uh, but also working with large organizations as well. And so we try to mold the, the course so that uh, this isn't just to help you succeed in the small organization and help you build it, but um, give you some tools and ways to think differently to work in larger organizations as well. Uh, and, you know, leading to the slide, you know, we say new entrepreneurs must be globally focused. Um, as you all know, everything's global these days. And with most businesses and things, if, if you're trying to accomplish scale, you're going to have to do it globally and also deal with a number of global factors that may be uh, policy related or unexpected, uh, unexpected like disasters, um, which also open up opportunities. So, at the end of the day, we want to help you solve problems uh, and give you the, the tools to solve the problems that you care about um, in this world of global affairs. Chris? Yeah, uh, I think um, maybe we can move on to the next slide. I'll just add, um, you know, the, the course is really designed um, to be um, extremely practical in nature. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it, it, it does start, you know, with theory. Um, but of course, we're talking about, you know, entrepreneurship really is just a fancy word for getting things done, right, and creating something out of nothing and solving problems. Um, and so what we what we like to do with um, you know, throughout the throughout the course, and, and you know, we'll talk a little bit about course structure. Um, but basically, you'll go through the process of um, you know of this this whole problem solving cycle. Um, you know, in the context of of, of creating a you know a, a company, um, you know, as sort of a, a project that takes you um, through the entire entire course. Um, but uh, you know, those tools, you know, we 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 believe pretty strongly are designed. Um, you know, to be used in any context, um, you know, after you graduate, right? So not everyone will start up their own company right away. Um, in fact, most of the most successful entrepreneurs, um, you know, out there uh, started companies in their 40s, uh, as opposed to sort of the, you know, the Facebook Mark Zuckerberg, you know, college dropout narrative. And so um, these skills are really designed to translate to, you um, you know, to to uh, you know any problem solving context, right? Whether you take a job with a government, an NGO, uh, a large corporation, a, a, an existing startup, um, you know the the ideas here um, are meant to be uh, rooted in practicality, um, and and we're really looking to teach skills as opposed to um, knowledge, if that makes sense. Um, you know, and that's that that's a little bit different from from most uh, most you know, courses in most, uh, in most grad programs. So we're, 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 we're quite proud of that. And we, um, we do, we, you know, we do focus a lot on that sort of, you know, skill creation, um, you know, side of things. We do that in context of, um, of some key themes though. So we, we do study um, all kinds of, um, you know, what we would call, um, you know, startups or innovative uh, companies. Some of them, you know, are no longer you know, really considered startups. But we look at some of the new business models that um, that the private sector and um, you know, and 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 certainly um, nonprofits and, and and the public sector, um, you know, are putting in place. Um, because it's really, you know, we're we're living in a time of of extreme change around, you know, how um, how power is shared, um, you know, between. Um, you know, customers and 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 um, you know, and companies and how power is shared between citizens and governments. You know, we're we're um, you know, 
we're, we're intent on, on exploring a bunch of those different you know, models that are emerging, right? So you're probably familiar with some of these like collaborative consumption um, or the sharing economy. Um, we certainly are going to dive into, um, you know, decentralization, um, you know, and sort of collective decision making and democratization of, um, you know, of, of, uh, of, of decision making across a number of different sectors. Um, we will definitely touch on, um, you know, uh, some of the, the more challenging um, harder to change sectors, right? The slower moving ones as well, and and how people are addressing that. So obviously, healthcare is a big theme globally, um, and that looks different uh, depending on where you are in the world. Um, but you know, there are a lot of um, a lot of similarities around how people are, are attempting to to move that sector forward. Um, you know, smart living, smart cities. How do you disrupt and and improve? Um, you know. Uh, what we would sort of um, think of as, as traditionally extremely entrenched, hard to change systems, um, you know, even even going down to the physical, right, buildings, roads, how do you how do you take these, um, you know, these things that are that are generally live for, for, for decades or centuries without any meaningful change and start to chip away at improving them. Um, and then, of course, we'll, we'll go, um, you know, down uh, the rabbit hole a little bit of social enterprise impact investing. Uh, you know, this has been um, a really, really, really um, emergent theme over the last 10 or 15 years um, with, uh, you know, with, with the confluence of, um, you know, of, of, of capital um, and mission-driven businesses. Um, so if you, if you think about, um, you know, how the world's billionaires, for example, deploy their, their, their money, um, you know, in service of, of, you know, philanthropic endeavors or to help the world, you know, uh, a century ago, it was building libraries and putting your name on buildings. Today, you know, you look at um, people like, um, you know, maybe not the most topical, uh, you know, or most timely time to mention Bill Gates's name, but you look at, you know, his work and, and, and in particular some of his lesser known work, like Breakthrough Energy Ventures, and, and he's really, you know, using um, impact investing um, to, to try to you know, mitigate climate change, right, through a far more traditional, um, you know, venture capital and startup cycle. Um, so philanthropy and, and impact investing are, are starting to look, you know, quite different from, from how they used to. And, um, and frankly, they look a lot more like traditional startup land um, and, 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 and venture investing than, than uh, you know, than they have over, uh, over most of, you know, most of, of history and certainly most of sort of, um, you know, uh, capitalism, uh, you know, historically. So um, we will so, touch on, on, on all of those themes. I'll inter interject there too, and I think it's really important. So working with um, a number of different policy makers, you know, you also can see the that startups aren't just solving problems or creating economic impact too. So that's a huge driver for that sector. And so, you know, we put these key emerging sectors here, but that could actually be a grid. We're seeing overlap between all of those and and especially on the social enterprise impact investing and development piece, it's just rapidly changing. Um, and we'll also go over, uh, you know, the impact of COVID and kind of how that's turned startups and scalable businesses um, into more kind of agile businesses. So um, what you'll learn to build. So, so the process is pretty fun, actually, or at least we try to make it be. Uh, we are very uh, interactive. We like when students present. We encourage a lot of teamwork. And so um, in, in almost every class, there will be at least one team exercise. Um, and in almost every class, everyone will have to present or speak at least one, once. Uh, we try to make it a very vocal, vocal class as well um, and usually kick off the class looking at various different uh, entrepreneurship and innovation models and news throughout the globe and encourage um, a, a nice discussion. But the pathway we follow um, is actually one that I used with startups for years and have used to run incubators. However, we've been able to tweak it and also make it applicable to the nonprofit sector. So um, we use what's called the business model canvas quite often and uh, work with uh, the work from uh, Steve Blank, who's over at Stanford and Bill Owlett at MIT. And a huge part of that is understanding and knowing who your customer is. And so a lot of the themes and tools that we work with are all around customer development and how that leads to successful 
businesses and, and um, it might not be your customer in a nonprofit. It might be, you know, the citizen or resident that you're um, working for, but we like to take that lens of how do we shape and form something so it's actually desirable for our customer. I would add, um, you know, that I think this is probably um, the longest you would ever hear us speak uninterrupted if you were to take this class. We, um, we do use slides and we do, um, you know, we, we, we do have a lecture component to, um, you know, to, to most of the courses, to most weeks, um, you, you, will, you will sort of get to absorb information that way. Um, but it really is discussion based. We understand that, um, you know, uh, the themes that we're touching on um, are, again, you know, they really are, uh, you know, skill based, um, and they're going to be new to almost everybody in the class. And so we, we like to make it, um, you know, heavily, heavily interactive and discussion based. Um, because frankly, you know, the real world is not lectures, right. And we, um, you know, and we, we, we want to get you guys um, out of the building, right, and into the customer development process, um, you know, really uh, in, engaging with, um, you know, with folks, uh, you know, quite literally, um, that you would be uh, attempting to solve a problem for or sell to. Um, so, it, it, you know, it, it, uh, it does take a, a practical bent, um, because we, we use this method, um, as Simon said, that, um, that has sort of been, you know, was really pioneered out of, out of Stanford and MIT and is now, um, you know, the way that most people choose to, to teach entrepreneurship. So I also want to uh, you know, mention... I, I, I want to be mindful of time, by the way, Simon. I, I want to say, if, we've you'd been like to ask a question. Yeah. if you'd like to ask a question, please put it in the Q&A box. So I think we'll chat for another minute or two. Um, but, uh, you know, to what Chris said, and we, you know, we try to bring in a lot of different folks um, from not just the entrepreneurs. Sometimes we will go visit an incubator, uh, maybe one of the ones at NYU. Um, but to Chris's point, we make it so interactive that actually the workshop that we do each week is, is new, not just for that week, but for that course year as well. Uh, there is a question up around the process to enroll for the class timelines and duration. Um, I would point that the duration I think is 15 weeks um, and I will point to Corey and Chrissy on, on the enrollment process, uh, but I think it'll be every Wednesday from 6.30 to 9.10. Chris, anything else you want to touch on from a high level? Uh, I mean, here are some slides that we've, we've pulled. Um, yeah, I think um, the real thing that you know, we, if, if we're looking at, you know, the, using this time mostly as, as, you know, trying to set expectations for what this course would be about. Um, we always use the phrase, get out of the building. Um, and, uh, and, and that really, you know, speaks to, um, speaks to the importance of uh, not working in a bubble, not working in isolation and not working with your, with your theory. Um, so we encourage is uh, what we encourage is, is, you know, is throughout the process of um, sort of, you know, idea through development of your venture to, you know, to pitching it to, you know, to real VCs at the end of the, at the end of the course, um, what we are going to continuously ask you to do is test your hypotheses, right? Um, and so it doesn't matter what, um, you know, what, what idea you have, it, you know, it could be a business idea, it could be a nonprofit idea, it could be anything. Um, we will, we will ask you to continually get out of the building, engage with, you know, potential customers, engage with potential suppliers, engage with potential competitors, um, and, um, you know, and try to get as much real world primary information as possible. Um, you know, this is, uh, you know, this is so that you can develop, um, you know, a firsthand understanding, um, as, as I think it says on the slide. Um, you know, of, of, uh, of what you actually need to do. Um, and, and that really is how, um, you know, how we, we think about entrepreneurship and, and what we want you guys to come away with, um, you know, is, is that process uh, and, and that hard skill. And, and it really is a hard skill. Um, in addition to some of the other ones we going through like financial modeling, and, um, you know, and, and all kinds of other things that we think are, are deeply practical. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions, but I think this so is the last slide we had. So, and, and you mentioned kind of other areas we touch into. We also touch into brand and how to communicate and articulate 
how you're solving a problem and what you solve. It's incredibly important um, for, for businesses to succeed. So that's something I also want to add. Um, we do have two questions. One is, do you go into specific policy problems? The answer is yes. So a big part of entrepreneurship and innovation is working around policy and identifying new solutions that either align with the policy or um, could work around the policy in cases like an Uber and Airbnb. Um, Chris, do you yeah, want to add to that? Yeah, and we also, I mean, you know, it's interesting. We, we do touch on this with Uber and Airbnb um, pretty substantially. And, you know, there are, there are kind of, you know, two lenses that we, that we take on policy. Um, one is, you know, how, um, how existing policy, you know, does or does not impact um, you know, a certain, um, you know, certain entrepreneurial idea, um, or, um, or, 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 um, you know, or, or, or set of businesses. The other is, okay, so there are a bunch of um, new business models that, that are frequently ahead of, of regulation, ahead of policy, making, right? And it is, it is, you know, often the case um, across a bunch of different industries, including the one that I work in, um, you know, that, um, you know, that, that we're years ahead um, of, of policy and generally are, are, are craving, you know, clarity um, from regulators and policymakers. And, um, and this is actually a daily part of, of, of my life. We, um, we work with, um, you know, a fairly substantial, um, you know, number of regulatory affairs folks, um, you know, in, in DC and around the world. Um, because of course, you know, blockchain technology is relatively new, and uh, and there's a lot of policy making going on around it. Um, and so, you know, this is this is, um, you know, in 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 the in the class, we'll discuss um, what you do when you're working in a context that might be ahead of regulators, um, and we'll also talk about, um, you know, what that looks like to to policymakers, right, and um, and how they have to balance um you know the needs largely for um sort of you know consumer protection and and and, uh, and privacy rights and things like that with um you know the economic growth imperative that they all see um and so there are you know there are um there are no good answers to that but it is something that we will certainly uh, engage with um largely around the sharing economy um examples and module that we'll do um, as well as the decentralized economy and uh, sort of the, the blockchain and crypto stuff that we'll touch on, um, which um, you know is, is fairly brief. It's about you know one one week that we'll we'll look into those. But um, but you know policy uh, will will come up in in probably um, three or four uh, of the of the of the sort of sectors that we're looking at pretty substantially. Does that answer your and, question? And, and the the pro and the project that you will present at the end to investors is something that you come up with entirely. We want to make sure that this aligns with your interests and helps you uh, get where you're going. Um, you know, I'm a firm bel believer in uh, you know leveraging grad school to use what you're going to do after. So if we can pick a project with you that's getting you know that's you know an excuse for you to talk to relevant people that you might work with in the future or get to know the space that you want to work with better, um, we absolutely want to do that. And if that ha has to do with policy, which I'm sure it does. Um, we will integrate that um, in an in a appropriate way there. Uh, there's another question around, is there an opportunity to pitch ideas to investors slash participate in NYU startup accelerators? The short answer is yes, absolutely. Um, you know, the investors we will bring to uh, the class will be at one set uh, off the bat, but also, you know, if we do believe that you have a promising project um, we can take it to our large investor network, um, and that's an understatement. Um, and as well as if, if you're interested in learning more about the NYU incubators, like I said, I was one of the co-founders um, of the Urban Future Lab at NYU. So we, we have that kind of full ecosystem um, at our hands as well. And I think we did a tour the last class at, at, at them as well. Any other questions uh, or questions? Uh, Chris, while we wait for more questions, uh, any other kind of final comments? I don't have much. I don't want to keep people hanging around if there are no other questions. So with that, it looks um, like we, we might want have one you. more actually. Oh, we have one more. Oh, we thought we were off the hook, Chris. Um, awesome. Is this only offered in the summer? It's actually only offered in the fall. So. Um, 
we hope to see you there and in person and feel free to reach out to us. Um, my NYU ID is ssc411 at nyu.edu and Chris's is CML13, although it's getting a bounce back right now. So I think, uh, I think Chris Lawler at NYU also works. Okay, great. Wait, one more question. Oh, no, that was the last one. Uh, with that, we thank you all. We hope to see you in person. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we love startups. We love uh, nonprofit startups, which is what I run. And we're always looking to help the next generation of entrepreneurs and innovators. And it's my firm belief that they don't just come from business school. They don't just come from engineering school, uh, but they also come from schools like the CGA. Uh, and we want to be here to support you along that path.